Yes, Dr. Ruckman, are there any other uh, animals in the Bible than the common known ones or types of Christ or the Antichrist? Uh, animals in the Bible? Yeah. Yeah, there are. There are, uh, there are all kinds of them. It'd be too long to get in, and I'll show you a, do a half a dozen just offhand. All right, the first one is come book of Revelation. And notice this animal here, given here, is a type not only of Christ, but also a type of the devil. Double application. Uh, and this here is a Revelation, and Revelation chapter, uh, Revelation chapter 5. And get Revelation 5 in one hand, get 1 Peter chapter 5 in the other. This animal here is a picture of Christ and also a picture of the devil. One time I said about an old saint, you always just say something good about folks. I think you'd say something good about the devil himself. And she said, well, you might imitate his persistence. <laughs> and that's the truth, see. And a lot of things about the devil that are commendable. You might, uh, you might uh, imitate his courage, his boldness. The righteous are bold as a what? The lion. The devil goes about as a roar, see. All right, First Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about. Out right there, the devil's called a lion. That's what Christ is called in Revelation 5. Revelation 5. Revelation 5, verse 5. One of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed. Open the book and loose the seven seals thereof. All right, I'll show you another animal. It's a picture of Christ and the devil. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. You know, you know the Bible from Genesis chapter 3, the serpent was more subtle than the beast of the field. All right, John chapter 3. In John chapter 3, here's uh, Christ talking about his crucifixion. And he says in John 3 verse uh, 14, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. He likened himself to a snake. of Christ. Now, those similitudes are found all throughout the Bible, and here are a few of them. Uh, the devil and Christ are both likened to serpents. They're likened to serpents because the devil is a serpent. Revelation chapter 12, Isaiah chapter 27, Genesis chapter 3. And when Christ dies on the cross, he becomes sin for you. God hath made him to be sin for us that do no sin. Uh, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. So when Christ dies on the cross, it's like that. So to this day, the medical corps has it like that. And it's Moses' serpent lifted up. The medical corps in the hospital, that's what they wear in Army and Navy and Marines. So you can't get away from the Bible even if you don't believe it. If you don't believe it, you still have to go by it. Well, that thing there is a picture of Christ becoming sin. All right, then they're both like the lions, those animals. Now, they're the animal thing that begin to cease, but the animals go on. For example, a whale in the Bible is a type of the devil. He's called Leviathan. And he's a whale in Psalms, but he's not a whale in Isaiah 27, because in Isaiah 27 he has more than one head. And he got more than one head in Psalm 74, and he got more than one head in Revelation 12. You never saw a whale more than one head in your life. Or right, so that thing's a type of the devil. Or right, that snake is a type of the devil. But since that's a type of Christ, you get this thing where Moses steps in there uh, before Pharaoh, and Moses slaps down that rod that turns into a snake, and Janus and Jamru step in and slap down their rod to become snakes, and it says, but Moses' rod swallowed theirs. Do you know what a snake it is that swallows snakes? It's a king snake. So what you got there is, these are two different kinds of snakes. And Moses' snake is not poisonous. And Moses' snake is a very peculiar snake, and it has crowns. You ever seen a king snake? That thing has a silver crown, and a gold crown, and a silver crown, and a king, and a... See? See who ever writes that book? She knows all the habits of all the animals. Amen. It isn't like uh, the Sutras and the Vedas and the Shastras and the Puranas and the Bhagavad Gita. It isn't like the Oriental writings. It isn't like these other religious books where Om concentrates his mind and so the yes is no and the no is yes and the yang is yin and the yin is yang. Everything. Who writes this book knows what's going on. Amen. Amen. All right. 
You read when Christ came back in Revelation 9, he had in his head many crowns. That means those things that old Janus and Jambres threw down were pit vipers or asps, they're Egyptians, or rattlesnakes. And so that poisonous snake is a picture of the devil. But a rattlesnake can't kill a king snake. When a rattlesnake bites a king snake, it just makes him mad. And he wraps around the rattlesnake and squeezes him with death and then swallows him. Now those are types in the animal world. And it means as sure as you live and breathe that every one of those animals is, a, is matched to something. If you want to find Christ among the, among the birds, you'd find the eagle. If you want to find the devil among the birds, you'd find a vulture. If you want to find a devil out in the ocean, you'd find a shark. Jaws. <laughs> and then if you want to find Christ out in the ocean, you'd get your porpoise. Because the shark can't keep up with the porpoise, and the porpoise is man's friend. And now, well, if porpoise killed the shark, you take down where I'm in, in Florida, our fish are wild down there, you know. I got thinking about salmon fishing the other day. The fellow kept saying, let him take it for a while. And you, I felt a bump there. I've had croakers hit a line harder than that, you know. You fool, let him swallow this bait a while before you set the hook. Down floor they hit. You know you've been hit, man. I'm in mean, a bluefish that long, boy. He will bend your rod, turn back to the reel, and strip the gears of your reel at the nylon. He'll strip them. You take down there those, those sharks in the water. I've, I've been for five feet of them, ten feet of them. I've never have been at home around them. I've never felt comfortable around them. <laughs> sharks make me nervous. The only time I want to meet a shark is in broad daylight on the pavement, about 12 o'clock <laughs> noon. <laughs> and I mean, I never, had one, I never had one bite me. And down there, the sand sharks don't attack people. They just attack fish. But every now and then, a tiger gets them there. They've been seen there where I've been fishing 12 feet long. I mean, a fin coming out of as big as a half a dining room table. Makes you nervous, man. <laughs> I, I never have liked them. Uh, uh, I've, been out, I've been waiting out in the bayous at night. I'll be standing there around 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning, that net, lead in your mouth, you know, waiting for the mullet to come down the channel. You hear them coming down like ball bats hitting the water. You stand there, you got to freeze. You can't make a sound. You spook them. And then you pitch that net, and I remember one night I pitched that net, and that net hit the water. It was phosphorus in the water. And that, that net hit that water. There was a shark laying off about five feet from me, waiting for the school to. And he didn't know I was there, and I know he was there. And boy, and I threw that net, he shot the water. I think you could have read a newspaper with a light. That phosphorus that bird went off. It just scared the tar out of me, man. Another time I was out there, and I was standing like this, and waiting for a school, and there's a shark about far near that door. And I wouldn't worry about my fall off, but I was keeping an eye on him, you know. It'd make you nervous, you know. And I stand there and a blue angel went over and broke the sound barrier. When he went over and went BOOM like that, it spooked that shark and he came right for me. I mean, 20 miles an hour, man. And it wasn't to get me. I knew he was just spooked, you know, but it makes you nervous. <laughs> and he just whoosh like that. And I took that net and threw it between me and him. That scared him again. He, he had a bad day that day. He'd get scared up about Ten years. But you know, watch those things go, and then, then you do this. You're out there about 12 miles offshore, and you go along on a boat, and you see something on the water goes, whew, like that little bite. Your boat's going 25 miles an hour, and this thing underwater just goes, whew, like that. I've seen that a half a dozen times. And looked over, I thought, what is that? It's a porpoise. The only time you see him in the tank, you just see him just move up a little and jump and flop around. And listen, that bird getting out of open water. He'd go by you at 35 miles an hour like you're standing still, and you can't even see his tail move. I don't know what he's doing. You got a vertical, you got a horizontal tail. Other fish are vertical, see? You got a horizontal tail. And that body's just one muscle. He gets that body going like out of that water. You go over that ship there and see him three feet underwater, just like he was an airplane going through the air. Just goes like that. And what them things do when the sharks come in, the sharks, if there's a porpoise around, that shark will get out. Because that porpoise will back off about from here to that door and then come at him and hit him and then go past him and turn around and come back and hit him again and literally beat him to death, to bludgeon him to death, break all his blood vessels, just kill him. That thing comes and that shark comes, that, oh, that old porpoise comes there 35, 40 miles an hour underwater, man. And that, that shark can't do nothing. He can't turn or anything. So that thing, that shark's a picture of the devil, that porpoise a picture of the Lord. Now these things go on and on. Christ says, beware of wolves in sheep's clothing. I know my sheep, my sheep know me. 
than Christians like sheep. She put her out in Wyoming and told me, he said, a sheep's the dumbest animal in the world is for its size. Have the smallest brain capacity for size. <laughs> I thought myself, just like Christians, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a Christian, you tell them something like I'm talking about tonight, and they say, well, Brother Roman, I just don't believe I sound like I could do that. You mean those fellows actually changed the Word of God and they perverted the Word of God on purpose? Well, I, I, I just done bah, 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 bah. <laughs> They're like sheep. And uh, you take the sheep that follow the leader. That sheep herder told me if a sheep go along the ground, jump up and kick its heels in the air, all the rest of them come along right by and jump up and kick their heel in the air <laughs> for no reason at all. They take them in the, they get them in the, in the slaughterhouse with a, with a black goat called Judas. They run them up into the chute and all the sheep follow them up into the chute. Well, there's all kinds of sermons in there. They, it can't, the sheep can't clean himself. Yeah. You think about that? No. That old dog can jump in the water or a pig can rub against a fence, but a sheep can't wash itself. The shepherd has to wash the sheep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> All right, he said, look out for wolves in sheep's clothing. He didn't say, now, people see people like me and my relation us fellows and your pastor, you don't worry about us because we're, we're, we're sheep in wolves' clothing. <laughs> 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 but fellas, you have to look out of guys like Swindle yeah. and Schur and, yeah. uh, and MacArthur and that, that smooth, slick bunch. That's a bunch. The fellow you got to look out for is the dearly beloved of God. This beautiful Sabbath morning, where there's so much good in the worst of us and so much bad in the best of us. It ill behooves us to judge one another. <laughs> judge not that. That's the bunch. That's a ravening, slobbering wolf. He's, trying to act, he's acting sheepish. <laughs> oh, I think you get these. Then he said, uh, the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Women are pigs. <laughs> Don't get mad at me, lady. That's what the book says, Second Peter two twenty two. Now, if you're a saved woman, you're you know you're a you. E u e w e e u. <laughs> oh, one of the, one of the stock market report up in Chicago about thirty years ago said today stock market report twenty thousand calves, four thousand goats, five thousand heifers, and six thousand ewes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought my son born, he said, Ewee, don't you know those farmers wonder what in the world was that? <laughs> unsaved woman like a pig, unsaved man like a dog. Beware of dogs, Paul says. Revelation chapter 22, without a dogs. Right. Follow me, I'll make you be fishers. See those things, those things, every one of those things is written by somebody who knows all the habits of the animals. Follow me, I'll make you become fishers of men. There are many kinds of fishers, there are people. There's many ways of catching them. Some, some men hit artificial bait, some men you got to eat live bait to get them. You take some men, some men, that you, some, you throw a net, you get four or five at one time. Put up a gill net, you get a hundred at one time. That's revival meetings. Most of it's one, hook and, hook and line, one at a time. Personal work. See? That thing will go. All right, follow making the fishers a man, is almost land of those things. He says, the labor is worth of his hire. The ox that treadeth out the corn, you're not to muzzle the ox that treads out the corn. Now, I'm a city boy, see. You might not know that, but that's because I had to preach so far out in the country when I first got saved that folks in the city wouldn't have me. <laughs> but I was raised in the city, and I know nothing about farm animals at all. Just nothing. And what I know, I, I talk to farmers about to get my information. And I said to a farmer one time, I said, what well, you know about oxen? He said, well, you won't know. I said, well, my Bible says ministers are like oxen. Well, what about oxen? He said, well, for it's an ox, it's a bull. That after the operation, you can put the yoke on him and work him. I said, Amen. He said, What'd you say? I said, Nothing. Go ahead. He said, Oxes usually work together best in pairs. He said, I plow with oxen. And he said, Something about oxen, they get a place in the field they can't get across, they kneel. I said, You're kidding. He said, No, I plow with oxen a lot of time. They get a place in the field they can't plow, they kneel. Isn't that strange? You know who wrote that pastor I quoted to you? A city-bred lawyer who sat at the feet of Gamaliel, Paul. How did he know that? He didn't know that. The Lord told him to write that. Right. Amen. Oh, I should have those oxen there. Unsaved man is like a wild ass's colt. And I've expounded you on that before. <laughs> All those animals. He says, consider the birds, consider the lilies, consider the fowls of the air. Birds are a type of people. 
I got a message called Some Birds I Have Known. <laughs> Preachers are like birds. Some are like parakeets, canaries, just harmless. Yeah. But cartoonists, canary flying home all torn to pieces, bill busted, and feathers all aside, and the mother saying, How many times have I told you not to fly over a badminton court? <laughs> <laughs> And then you have mockingbirds. You have these preachers that just imitate what they're told. They, they get those denominations, she's every son in what to preach, you know, the special message of the special day. I've been known to preach on hell on Mother's Day. <laughs> and then you, have, uh, then you have ostriches that stick their head in the sand. They don't, and they don't look at what's going on. They can't fly. They can't. Do you ever hear a preacher preach and wait 30 minutes for him to get off the ground? He never gets off the ground? Yeah. That's an ostrich. And then you have chickens, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and they're chicken. And then you have uh, chicken hawks, you know, and, they, and you have uh, peacocks, now the strutters, you know. And you have uh, owls that can see good in the dark. You have eagles up above the rainbow, see, they're, 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 they're like birds. I have times up there, we've got to close here. You know, I think about these things. I, I've got a record at home. i got a lot of these records. I like kids' records, you know, I mean. I mean, you can tell I never grew up, you know, and I don't ever intend to either. I, I, well, it must have been about 10 years ago, my wife said to me, what are you going to be when you grow up? I said, I'm going to be a hockey goalie. <laughs> and, you know, I was just kidding. I've played uh, goalie now over 300 times the last three years. At home, I play on the cement uh, about six games a week, and then play on roller skates out in Boise, Idaho, and play on ice up in Lansing, Michigan in the winter. I must play at least 300 games. I know the moves now. I know them. I know them. They still get pucks past me, though. Old goalies never die. They just get puckered out. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as I know, I'm the only, I'm the only 66-year-old goalie in the business. <laughs> and uh, part of that is the fact that uh, I just never grew up. And I don't intend to. Uh, I like to listen to children. So I, like, I like, you know, uh, a huff and a puff and a blow your house in. Well, that's, I like that stuff, you know. And Goldilocks and the Three Bears, you know, who been sleeping in my bed? You know, I like that stuff. You know. just, that stuff appeals to me. And uh, one of my favorite stories is a story about the flying mouse. And the flying mouse says, this is mouse, he wants to fly. And he isn't supposed to, but the good fairy gives him wings. And he comes home to mom and daddy and says, look, I can fly, I can fly. And they're horrified. They scream and run off. Then he goes out in the woods, you know, and tries to play with his friend, and the animal won't happen because he's got wing, and the bird won't happen because it looks like a, a mouse. And finally, all by himself out there crying out there in the dark, and a big old bat shows up and says, Good evening, brother. The little mouse says, I'm not your brother. And he said, well, I show you, my brother, you're a bat. And he says, I'm a mouse, I'm a mouse, I'm a mouse. And the bat says, You're not a bat, you're not a mouse. And the mouse says, Well, if I'm not a bat, not a mouse, what am I? And the bat says, I'll tell you what you are, brother. You're nothing. <laughs> then he begins to sing, and he says, You're nothing, you're nothing, you're nothing, but a nothing, you're nothing, you're nothing, you're not a thing at all. To be a bat is one thing, a silly and a dumb thing. The least a bat is something, and you're not a thing at all. You're nothing, you're nothing, you're nothing. <laughs> now, see to me, that's profound, see? That's profound. profound. I know a lot of Christians, <laughs> they're nothing. <laughs> <laughs>